Welcome to the Astrology Hub podcast. I'm Amanda Pruel Walsh, founder of Astrology Hub and your host for our flagship show. We explore the many ways astrology can support you in your relationships, career, health, and personal growth. Thanks for tuning in. This podcast is brought to you by The Inner Circle, your place to learn astrology in community with the masters and transform your life in the process. Well, hello and welcome. I am so happy that you're back here with us today for another deep dive in our house series. Today, we're going to be covering the fifth house. I'm here with Shamanic Astrologer and upcoming Inner Circle and Astrologer Connect Astrologer, Sheridan Semple, who will be guiding us through all things fifth house. Just in case you're hopping into the middle of this series, this house series that we're doing here at the Astrology Hub podcast is dedicated to helping you understand what all 12 houses mean and what they represent in your life. Each week, we're releasing a new episode focused on one of the houses taught by one of our inner circle astrology teachers. We've gathered the most commonly asked questions about each house, and we'll be covering those here today. Before we dive into the fifth house exploration that we'll be doing here today, I just wanted to tell you a little bit more about Sheridan. Sheridan combines her profound understanding of herbs and scents to aid you in healing any body or soul traumas you feel ready to shed. By trade, she is a certified shamanic astrologer and spiritual aromatherapist. She uses her experience to teach her clients how to find themselves, their path, and connect with their soul's intention for this lifetime. So Sheridan, welcome back to the Astrology Hub podcast. We're so happy you're here. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here, and I'm super excited to talk about the fifth house because it's definitely one of my favorites, near and dear to my heart. So fabulous. Yeah. All right. Well, let's just start there. What is the fifth house? What does it represent? So in a nutshell, I would say the main thing the fifth house represents for me is like creativity, our creations, our creative expression, our self-expression, right? So um, it's like, it's the place where we express our uniqueness the most, right? We're coming out of the fourth house where we've gotten into the heart and love, and now we're ready to expand and bring that out into the world in some way, right? It's this very expansive energy is the fifth house. And one thing I heard Gemini Brett, who does so much with Astrology Hub, teach one time about the fifth house, he said, it's like in that movie Castaway with Tom Hanks when he finally makes fire himself from like rubbing the sticks together on the deserted island and makes fire. And then the next scene is like him like dancing around the bonfire, screaming like, I made fire. I am God. Right. That's the feeling of the fifth house for me in so many ways. Right. That just absolute unbridled joy and pleasure in what we have done all on our own, right? That kind of place, like the kid that comes to show you their painting or their creation or the fort they made or whatever it is, right? Just that place of, wow, here I am and look what I can do. Look what I made. That's what the fifth house is to me. Okay. And so what does it mean if you have planets in the fifth house? How does that, you know, that, that creativity, that self-express, that exuberant self-expression like children have, what, how does that interplay with the planets that you might have there? So if you have planets in the fifth house, for me, it shows that there's going to be an intention in your soul's path, right? If that's what astrology is, is your soul has come here to evolve in some way. And you have a lot of planets or prominent planets, personal planets in the fifth house. Then it shows me that the fifth house, these themes, this, what can you create is going to be a part of a teacher guide for you in your evolutionary journey that either having to overcome fears and stress around putting your creations out there 
or just the joy of putting your creations out there are going to be part of how you learn and grow and evolve with your soul throughout this lifetime. Okay. And would it be, I mean, do you think that it would mean that you might have challenges with that inherently that, that this is because it's part of your path and it's, it's a teacher for you that it may not necessarily come easily, but that it's something that is, is guiding your path. It's guiding the way for you. Is that a correct interpretation of what you just said? Yes, I would say so for some people, depending upon what's there, it might, it might come a little bit more easily and be a little bit more natural for them, but often, right, the way we grow and evolve is through overcoming hardships and challenges and working our way through that, right? And we obviously live in a time where we don't just sit around and celebrate everyone for who they are and their unique gifts, which is what we want to be doing. And I feel like that's part of what Astrology Hub is really all about, is like helping all of us to do that. So hopefully we're stepping into more of a time where it would be less challenging to learn the lessons of having a lot of planets in the fifth house. Mm. Is the fifth house and Leo the same thing? Great question. Not for me. There's a lot of resonant energy and similarities there, but not the same thing because Leo is an archetype. It's a sign. It's like an energy that we know within us and are maybe stepping more into or learning more about. But the fifth house is more like a place. Like I like to think of it as kind of like an arena of where the signs or the archetypes would be playing out for you, right? Because not everyone has an Aries rising and wouldn't have Leo on their fifth house, right? Like you could have any sign on your fifth house. So so they're not exactly the same, but there's similarities and there's crossover between them. Yeah. I mean, the, the, the description of it is very similar, but I hear what you're saying in terms of it's a it's like a, a part of your life. It's, it's a landscape. It, it's yes. or a room you enter. Or I'm trying to think of an, an analogy. Sheridan, what, what does it mean if you don't have any planets in the fifth house? Does that mean creative self-expression isn't a part of your path or, or what does it actually mean? Yeah, I'm glad you asked that because I don't have any planets in my fifth house, but I'm an artist, right? I went to school for art. That's my background. So it doesn't mean if you don't have planets there that you will not have any creative expression because for one, everyone's going to have a fifth house. They just may not have planets in it, but they'll have transits through it. Things will be going on, lighting it up, but creativity expression like that can come through in different ways with different planets and different areas and different houses. It's not just limited to the only way you're ever going to be creating anything is if your fifth house is just totally loaded, right? It doesn't, it doesn't take away from that, but it, it may not be that that's like one of your main intended ways of learning and growing. It may come around in other different ways. So in some ways it could be easier for you to express creatively if you don't, especially if you don't have something like Chiron or Pluto in the fifth house, which might make it actually like really something that you need to overcome some obstacles in order to express, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I guess I would love to say that I feel like that's a hundred percent true, but I definitely feel like I have things, you know, overcoming being an artist, putting things out there, but yeah, I agree that it's not that same level of intention of growth for me in the same way. If it was focused around the fifth house. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. We've talked about this on, as we've gone through the other houses, which by the way, if you've missed house one through four, after you're done with this video, it would be a great idea to go back and check those out. The whole series has been so amazing and helpful. And if you're curious about the houses, you're going to learn a lot. But one of the things that the astrologers keep saying over and over, especially when I ask the question, what if you have no planets in that house, is to pay attention to the zodiac sign that is on the house cusp in your chart, and then find the planet that rules it, or like Kaylin Castell said last week, the planet that is resonant with it because she was going away from the word ruler. And she said, well, we could use resonance instead. 
um, and then see where that planet is in your house. And then those, that planet and that house are connected and linked. So I'm just reminding everybody right now, if you haven't already downloaded our free gift for this series, which is a guide that walks you through step-by-step step how to do that, how to find the sign on the house cusp, how to find the planet that rules it or resonates with it. And then the beginnings of how to synthesize that when you look at the rest of your chart, go to astrologyhub.com slash ruler, and then you'll have the step-by-step -step of how to do that. Sheridan, do you want to add anything to that, that process of finding the, the house cusp and then finding the planet in your chart and then how you synthesize those together? Yeah. And I think the fifth house is a great place to talk about this because it's always trying from the ascendant, right? So it's always anything to do with the fifth house is always going to be supportive and trying to help you get towards your ascendant, which is really kind of, you know, from the shamanic astrology perspective, like the life goal, it's like the new school you're going to, it's the new mystery school you're trying to get your PhD in. So the fifth house, whatever's there, right, is going to help you get there. So one way is if you have a fire sign ascendant, you'll have a fire sign fifth house. If you have a water sign ascendant, you'll have a water sign fifth house, right? It's just walking the trine that degrees. It's going to always be the same element. So that's an easier way to start trying to figure things out, I think. Ooh, can you bring that to life for us? So let's say you're a fire ascendant, a fire sign ascendant or rising or first house, right? We, I just want to make sure everybody knows ascendant, rising, first house. We're, we're basically referring to the same thing. So let's say you have a fire sign there. That means you're going to have a fire sign fifth house. And that means the fifth house then is contributing to the quote unquote mystery school that your soul is here to, and to excel in. So can you give us an example of that? Can you like pretend yeah. we're at a chart and this is what you're seeing? Yeah. So if you have, like, I'll just use mine. I have Leo rising. So I have Sagittarius on my fifth house, right? Or if you have an Aries rising, you'd have Leo on your fifth house. So you could kind of just walk down the signs and figure out what is the next fire sign? That's what's on my fifth house. Or what is the next water sign? That's on my fifth house. So Sagittarius being on my fifth house, how am I, you know, the way I interpret it is like that creative self-expression is going to come through that spiritual quest, that seeking type of energy, but that is going to help me step more into my Leo rising expression of finding like deeper self-love, right? The one that I can dance around the bonfire because I did make fire, right? Like learning that I can make fire. That's kind of the Leo aspect to me. Oh, I love it. Okay. Um, let me ask you another question. So uh, first of all, which house system do you use? I use whole signs predominantly. I'll look at others, but predominantly I use whole signs in readings. And so if somebody was using a different house system, would, would that what you just said still be true? That it's always trying with the ascendant? It's going to still be trying, but what will happen is your planets can shift houses. So I don't know if it'll get too complicated, but depending upon the degree of your ascendant, like mine is almost 29 degrees. So when I change house systems, all my planets change houses. And it's not that one house system's exactly right and another one's wrong. It's like a both and is how I look at it. So when something switches from 12th to 11th, it's like, okay, that's a both and for me. That stellium I have in the 12th is a stellium that exists in the 11th as well. And what does that mean? It's more information, but yes, the trine piece would still be there for someone, but people play around with it, play around with your houses because you'll probably get more information rather than less of where you are wanting to be going and what's happening for you. I, I find that especially for beginner students or people just starting to look at their charts, this can be so confusing. Let me just put a plug in right here for 
being okay, not having all the answers right now, because astrology is the kind of thing where you're going to know what you need to know right now, trust what you know right now, what you're grasping, and you're going to start to understand what the astrologers are saying more and more and more as you continue exploring and just enjoy the journey. And also start somewhere. So if you have started with Placidus or, you know, whatever house system you started with, just stay with that for now and explore with that when you're ready to expand your horizons and start looking and being like, oh, what would happen if I use whole sign? Like what would happen to the rest of my chart? And what does that mean? Then do that when you're ready. The other thing is remember that we are not like one dimensional, that humans are very complex and nuanced. And so as you are ready to discover more and more about yourself, and about the people in your life, more and more will, will be revealed. So I know that like on some level sounds mysterious and vague, but you'll know what I'm talking about the more you do this. All right, Sheridan. So how about answering a few of these? Oh, let, let's do this another like sort of logistical question because we haven't addressed this, this in the house series yet, but what if you don't know your birth time? How do you how does that affect the houses? And can you even be a part of this conversation if you don't know your birth time? Yes. Great question. And I'll just add to what you said before that it's like approach astrology with an open hand, right? Just like, like Amanda was saying, like the things that land, that's just all you need to work with right now. And don't worry about all the rest of it. Right. And always let it be a both and situation. Don't grip and get tight because it's trying to like help you unravel and experience more of who you really are. So the more space you allow, the more that will feel beautiful and you will come to a better place with it. But answering this question. So Yes, not everyone's going to know their birth time, but everybody can do astrology, right? You're not left out if you don't know your birth time. So the ways that you would start to work around it is know that the houses are all going to be there on your chart. You just may not know exactly where they all are, but they're all there. So when you're listening to this series, that's all there for you. But things you could start to look at is do you have things in Leo, which is a resonant energy with uh, the fifth house or where, where's your sun sign? Everybody's going to know that you're going to know that most of everything on the chart, you can know without a birth time, there's just specific pieces, parts you can't. So you can start to look in different places. What's my son? Well, there's an energy of that creative self-expression, the light that you're learning to shine, right? That heart expression. That's the sun as well. Yeah. Your son might be in cancer. It's something different, but it's still these themes can come through for you in different ways. And there's also hope that someday you will know your birth time because there's something in astrology called rectification. And there are astrologers that, that are specialists in chart rectification. And they're basically working backwards from events that have happened in your life and helping you hone in on the actual birth time. Someday on our reading platform, we will have astrologers who focus and specialize on chart rectification for all of you out there. They're like, God, I would love to be able to really pinpoint it. So that's coming. Stay tuned. But in the meantime, yes, you can start to work with it the way Sheridan's talking about. And Sheridan, do you just use like a 12 o'clock PM approximate birth time when you're working with someone who doesn't know their birth time? Generally. Yes. Yeah. Generally. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you could just go and when they, when the little system asks for your birth time, just put 12 PM, that's a starting point. And eventually you'll, you'll get to get more clarity on that if you want it. All right. Why do, okay. So, this, so these are some of the questions that come in. Some of the most commonly asked questions about the fifth house. Some, some of the, sometimes these questions totally perplex me, but normally we understand eventually why people are asking this. Um, can the fifth house show luck? Like, can yeah. it show good luck? Right. Isn't that so interesting? I think that comes to, I think that has to do with the fact that the fifth house people can associate with gambling in some way. And so I think the luck piece comes off of that, but it would be interesting if someone else has a different answer to that. But 
What I think what it really shows is more of risk. And I think that's more what the gambling piece and the luck piece come in around because there's a risk, right? There's a vulnerability in saying like, whoa, look what I created, whatever it is, right? And it, these creative expressions don't necessarily have to be art, right? They could be the spreadsheet that you just figured out how to do better and no one has done before, or the way you just organize the pantry in a whole new way that is like, that's a creative expression, right? So there's a risk in saying, whoa, look what I created. Like I feel pretty good about myself about this. What do you think? And I think that's where those themes get associated with the fifth house. Interesting. Okay. Can the fifth house tell you anything about your children? Yes. Right. So that's probably one of the main things that the fifth house has really been associated with is children. So the way I look at that is it's not going to necessarily tell you about your kids or whether you would have kids or not have kids necessarily, but that it will show that children, if you choose to have them, and that's a blessing that works out for you, will be teachers and guides for you on your evolutionary path, right? That what's happening there, it may be that they're the ones that show you that unbridled joy and help that open up for you. Or, you know, creating children, that's a, one of the biggest things that we create as human beings in a huge way. And right, no matter who has kids, they're going to be your teachers and guides. But that that what you create there is going to be a massive initiation cycle for you throughout your life. Mm. Could it also be though, so like my, my love has Saturn in the fifth house and he never had kids, but I've brought kids into his life. And so I see this uh, dance. It's really, it's really fascinating for me to watch him engage with kids. They are so much of a teacher for him. And, and he, and there's so much joy for him in like unlocking that part of himself, that playful childlike part of himself. So that would probably be, probably be true whether or not you actually physically have your own children, correct? Yes. All the things you just said. Yep, exactly. Like I don't have any planets in my fifth house, but I have two stepsons. So it's the same kind of situation, right? And wow, what a journey that has brought me on and taught me so much. Mm, okay. What happens when you have a transit to the fifth house? You alluded to this earlier, but would love to dive into it even more. Yeah. So it's a, it's a time that it's lighting up these themes for you, right? It's a time that there's a, an intention around diving into all of that more. Like right now I have the sun, Venus, Mercury passing through my fifth house, transiting my fifth house. And I've just been like, creating so much art, making so much art, because that's my creative self-expression, right? But for someone else, it's going to be something else. And it'll depend upon the planet, right? Like you'd mentioned like Chiron or Pluto before, that's going to be a really long transit through your fifth house. So there could be a lot of like transformation, empowerment opportunities for you, healing, wounding opportunities around your creative expression, right? Or it could be Jupiter and you're just like, woo, on fire, right? You just can't stop creating things, right? That type of experience. One of the unique gifts that you bring to Astrology Hub that not all astrologers focus on is aromatherapy and how the different scents, how the different oils and aromas actually associate with different planets and different archetypes, how you can use those while you're in specific transits. It's a really cool stuff to explore, but how does that, does that, can we work with aromatherapy and houses? Let's just start there. Yeah, definitely. Right. Because you think about the plants, they're bringing an energy signature and they've been associated with all of the archetypes, the planets, the energies forever. And so I like aromatherapy because it helps you step into that vibration more like on a conscious daily anointing practice type of place. So 
one, you know, like Langling, like blossoms, like es essences that come from the flowers, like rose or jasmine, Langling, they're amazing for the fifth house because they're the creation of the plant, right? Or like the fruits or another, like orange or lemon or lime, right? They're just, you think of those as like joy in the sun in a bottle, right? They help you step into and be a part of that vibration, whether it's the transit or your planets, or you're just working on your creative expression, all of that, they can just help you just be like little buddies on the journey with you. Mm, so if you're wanting to tap into more of your creative expression and really, um, you know, like you said, create art or play, or even maybe even bring in children into your life. I don't know. It would that, would that work? Um, do you recommend that we then gravitate towards sense like that? So we can bring that type of energy to our life. Yes, absolutely. Right. They're amazing manifestors. They help bring you into the vibration of what you're trying to do or learn or move towards. Right. That's what it's all about. And there's something about that conscious daily or weekly practice of like just sitting down anointing yourself which is a millennial old tradition right of consciously saying can you help me calling to the earth the medicine of the earth to like help you in what you're trying to do mm. I've recently gotten so into that Sheridan I love it and I have my diffusers and I pick set you know I, I cut it's like what what do I feel is a scent that would support me right now in this moment with whatever it is I'm doing, whether it's, I need to relax more. So what would help with that? Or I'd love to feel more creative or I'd love to get focused or whatever it is. And then using the plants that kind of speak to me in that moment and, and letting their whole essence fill the room that it's really powerful. I mean, it's very, and it feels very connected and magical at the same time. Yeah. I love that. I love hearing you say that's what you're doing and that you're just intuitively choosing. That's the most perfect way to do it in the whole entire world. So yay. Mm -hmm. I love that. That's so yes, and, you know, I have a daughter who's super into it too. She just anytime, even if like, if she's not feeling well, or one of the things I know I can do for her is get the diffuser going, let her like be in one of those um, essences. She loves the scents. Actually, both my daughters really like it, but okay. Um, so, so we, we talked about creativity. We talked about self-expression. Um, is the fifth house, this is another question that comes in, is the fifth house about sex or is that the eighth house? Yeah, good question. So it's a, you know, I'm going to go to back to that both and. So sex or the bringing together of an egg and a sperm, however that occurs, because that can happen in a lot of ways outside of having sex. That is what makes a child right? So yes, that is a part of the fifth house because that's that creative spark. That's the creation that leads to a children, child, which is an incredible human creation, right? One of the pinnacle human creations, right? But it's also, you know, one of the ways that the fifth house is known as the house of pleasure, so obviously sex is something that's pleasurable to our senses, right? Healthy sex, desired sex, pleasurable to our senses. So it, it's a piece of that within the fifth house. But I think that like that depth, that like soul to soul bonding, that like intimacy piece is more of the eighth house for me. So I'm going to put sex in both houses. <laughs> okay, good. Yeah. Well, it can show up in as many houses as it yes. wants to. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Um, Sheridan, is there anything else you want to say to people as they're exploring the fifth house, what it means in their chart, uh, how to maybe embrace it more or embrace this aspect of their life more? Is there anything else you'd want to add? Yeah, I would just say that, you know, tuning into that place in your heart and, and just letting it grow and just start to move out and expand into what you want to express in your own individual uniqueness, right? We are all special snowflakes. And that lives in the fifth house for me in such a huge way. 
like go ahead and just let that start opening and expanding. And then that's the journey into the fifth house. Mm, I love what you just described. It's, it's these houses. I think we often think of the chart and the sky as outside of ourselves, but what you just described is tapping into that part of yourself inside of you and letting it expand and become the playground that you are creating in. Like you, you're, instead of walking into it, you're allowing it to actually come from within you, which is really powerful. Sheridan, thank you so much. This has been so helpful. If any of you are interested in working with Sheridan and or any of the astrologers that you have been meeting as a part of this house series, I highly encourage you to get on the wait list for the inner circle, because that is where you'll get to be in mentorship with them. You know, they will be teaching you, they will be your teachers every single month of the year. And you'll get to go and do deep dives into different topics of astrology with these astrologers, which I hope that you're seeing by now that these are very special, skilled, very experienced astrologers that will be guiding your astrological studies. You can get on the wait list. We're not open right now, but you can get on the wait list at astrologyhub.com slash IC23. If you're watching this far in the future, you can just go check out that link. And I'm sure that it'll bring you to the whatever wait list for whatever year we're at. Then you also can just go to astrologyhub.com and look for the inner circle. And don't forget to get your free gift. That's a part of this series, astrologyhub.com slash ruler. And that's going to help you again, explore more deeply, which sign is on the house cusp of the fifth house or whatever house you're looking at. What planet is the ruler or the resonant energy with that sign and how to find that planet in your chart. And then how to begin the process of synthesizing that. Like, what the heck does that mean anyways? So we will be continuing the series next week with Cameron Allen, who will be covering the sixth house. You're going to learn so much. And we're actually continuing on this process of astrologers that work a lot with the body and work a lot with healing, you know, and, and using astrology in a capacity of how it relates to your body and how you can use it to actually heal your body and experience more vitality and health in your life. So that's coming next week. If you haven't caught all the episodes that we've done up until now, highly encourage you to go back to house number one with Sam Reynolds and just watch this entire series. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for being here, Sheridan. Thank you. It's been a pleasure to be here with you. Can't wait to catch you all in the next episode. Thank you for being a part of our community. Thank you as always for making astrology a part of your life. Take care, everybody. Hi, I'm Rick Levine, and I'm really looking forward to teaching the upcoming Astrology Foundations Level 3 course here at Astrology Hub this coming February. This is the course that you've all been waiting for that takes an in-depth dive into the magic of quintiles, subtiles, and other harmonic aspects. If you want to be the first to know when registration opens, sign up for the waitlist now at astrologyhub.com slash foundations3waitlist. I look forward to seeing you there.